Behind me is Tulare Lake. At one point in time, it was the second largest lake west of the Mississippi, and it's here in California. But as you can see right now, it's not really supposed to be here, and it hasn't been here for decades. It was here for thousands of years, then it disappeared, and only occasionally does it return. And now is one of those times. Prior to 1898, Tulare Lake was a broad, shallow body of water over 700 square miles in area. Being broad but shallow, its size fluctuated with the seasons as rain and meltwater filled the lowlands here in the San Joaquin Valley, delivered by four rivers from the surrounding mountains. Summer evaporation resulted in regular rain showers and lower levels, while spring meltwater refreshed and at times flooded the area composed mostly of marshlands and swamps due to not being very deep. It has been situated at the bottom of this valley for over half a million years, and was second only to the Great Salt Lake in area for bodies of water west of the Mississippi, and was the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi. The freshwater attracted plants, animals, and humans. The Yakut tribe settled here for nearly 5,000 years and is theorized to be one of the largest and regionally dense populations of native peoples in North America. This prosperity was enriched by the abundance provided by Tulare and the rivers that fed the Central and San Joaquin Valleys. The Yakut tribespeople would make balsa boats of the reeds and sedges that grew in the marshlands and then would take these boats out onto the lake to hunt ducks and other birds as well as fish. Life here, in pre-contact America, was probably not that bad. That changed pretty quickly after first contact with the European explorers and settlers around 1772. The lands were quickly appropriated, the tribes people displaced or indentured, and most would follow the same fate as a majority of other indigenous populations, dying to diseases brought from Europe. Tulare Lake would also end up being a casualty of this appropriation as well. The lake itself was completely intact around 1850. By 1858, the majority of the Yakut people had been removed from the area and sent to a reservation, while the surrounding lands were settled and farms and ranches grew in the rich and fertile valley. Sometime around the 1870s and 1880s, the first irrigation and water diversions began from both the lake itself as well as the rivers that fed it. For several decades, though, Tulare held on, enough so that beyond the normal fishing boats and other watercraft, one man even imported a split-sail schooner known as the Water Witch. First used as a transport vessel between San Francisco and Alcatraz Island, the man, known as Eating Smith, purchased it and through a combination of sailing, dragging, and horse-drawn carting it, eventually got it into the lake with the intent of using it to collect the eggs of ducks and other birds so that he could sell them in the city. He earned the nickname Eating due to the fact that he literally ate most of his collected eggs as well as the terrapin turtles he captured, though many of the turtles did end up getting sold to restaurants. In conjunction with Mr. Smith's penchant for eating his own profits, the Water Witch was a doomed venture as irrigation, water diversion, and the damming of the rivers for farming on the eastern side of the valley steadily depleted Tulare of fresh water. Flooding in the 1860s killed thousands of animals amongst the ranches, and settlers began constructing more dams to better regulate water flow from the mountains. The small towns and settlements began to find themselves further from the lake shores, starting around the 1850s, and by 1884, a Scottish traveler and writer predicted that the entire basin was at risk of being absorbed and depleted, with the magazine Scientific American agreeing in an article written the same year. Within 14 years, this would become reality. Steam-powered shovels built giant levees to separate the water and create farmland, pumping the water into canals and ditches. By 1898, the lake was technically gone. Patches of water remained in some areas. In fact, enough remained in the 1930s and 40s that Naval Air Station Alameda used it as an outlying landing spot for their seaplanes. But by then, it was nowhere near as expansive as it had been decades prior. The final nail in the coffin for Tulare came around this time as well. In 1938, a devastating flood struck, causing widespread destruction, killing thousands of cattle and other ranch animals, and inundating the farmlands. And 17 years later, in 1955, it flooded again. What followed was outcry by the residents. 
who demanded more controls to be put in place by the state to permanently regulate the seasonal water flow. They conceded, built more dams, and killed Tulare Lake once and for all. So how is it that now, in 2023, it's back? Well, all of those dammed rivers may not be able to deliver water to the lake, but atmospheric rivers can't be dammed. Several months of rain here essentially refilled the basin, and now more than 100 square miles are underwater, as you can see. Not only were farms and ranches flooded, but the towns nearby, like here outside Corcoran, were also partially submerged, causing evacuations due to the concerns of rising water levels. This wasn't the first time this had happened since 1955. It re-emerged again in 1969, then again in 1983, and most recently, before this year, in 1997. It's been over 25 years since Tulare Lake re-emerged in any form, and now it's back pretty significantly. So now the local population just waits for the sun to shine and evaporate it all away, right? Should be gone by fall. Well, not quite. Those atmospheric rivers also dumped record snow in the surrounding mountains. Snow that's going to be melting all summer, probably overflowing the dammed rivers and potentially all flowing directly to this spot, growing the lake even larger, potentially as much as 25 to 30 percent of its original size. As that water flows from the Sierras into the foothills and into the valley, it's carrying life with it from tiny bugs and fish eggs to tadpoles to full-grown animals. This temporal population will be reminiscent of when Tulare was home to a massive biodiversity, sustaining plant, animal, and humans alike. Already, it is becoming a new stopping point for migrating birds. Amphibians and minnows are finding room to grow, and small fish are congregating in the only shade they can find, which today is ranch structures and farming equipment. It is expected that Tulare will be here for another two years before it dries up again until it is reborn again, 15, 20, maybe 30 years from now. What is almost certain, though, is that it will be back. The question just becomes when and to what capacity. Thanks for watching. Check out another video here. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers for helping me get here. And as always, until next time, get lost.